five badges now and three more to go. So as promised, a little rant on TM placement in Saffron. Psychic. The, the game's strongest move is given to you by an NPC and you don't even need to have cleared out the Sylph Tower to get it. Meanwhile, Psy Wave, a completely useless move that I'm sure many of you don't even remember what it does, well, it's given to you by the Gym Leader, which is one of the hardest fights in the game. Never mind the fact that I totally thrashed her, but just the fact that I had to go as far as to use Hypnosis on her Alakazam and risk taking super effective hits just so I could land decent physical damage, well, it's a testament to how difficult this fight is compared to the others. But yeah, Psy Wave, if you remember, it does random damage between 1 and 1.5 multiplied by your level. So not only is it more inconsistent than Nightshade or Seismic Toss, its average damage is actually lower than those moves. What the fuck were they thinking? Now it's time to head down to Fuchsia, I'll do so via the cycling road, however there's a Snorlax in the way, this one I'm not gonna bother catching, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna kill that fat blob of HP and be done with it. So yeah, uh, in the news department there have been the first details of Mystery Dungeon 3 that have come out. And there's only going to be one version this time, it's going to be called Explorers of the Sky. Of course, that opens two avenues. Either Rayquaza's a major player again, or more likely, it's going to be about Shaymin. Since, remember, uh, the, the 11th movie was called Giratina and the Sky Warrior, in reference to Shaymin, of course. At any rate, I'm quite pleased that there's going to be only one version, because Really, you could get the version exclu exclusives via Wonder Mail code, so it's not like it was that big a deal. It was only Mewtwo and Celebi in the, the second one that were really exclusive to each other. And by the way, there is still no sign of a second chance to get them in the opposite version. So there never was any real point to having uh, two different versions. Well, the first one had a version for the DS and another one for the Game Boy Advance, so yeah, I could let that slide, but for the second one, it was just uh, irritating, you know, uh, not being able to catch them all. You only had this one Pokémon missing. Anyway, now it's time to head to Cycling Road, and whereas in the other Cycling Roads in the series, the, the other cyclists were your average nice guy NPCs. Well, here they're rude motorcycle riders, almost like Hell's Angels. Yeah, I'm gonna call them Hell Hell's Angels just for the hell of it. And this guy is setting the tone quite nicely. One step outside and he's all like, What do you want? Yeah, I see what I mean. Anyway, back to Mystery Dungeon 3 for a second. One surprising thing is that it did away with the 16 starters and instead has increased the number to 21. The 16 starters that were in Mystery Dungeon 2 plus 5 new, including a returner from Mystery Dungeon 1, that being Eevee. Of course, a lot of people were pissed that Eevee wasn't a starter in the second game and that expansion is basically Chunsoft's way of answering to those people who were peeved that Eevee wasn't available as, as a starter. Now it's going to play a lot like in Mystery Dungeon 1, it's going to be relying on a lot on Quick Attack and Shadow Ball for range damage. Well, as range as Quick Attack is at any rate, and there's gonna be nice filler with Bite and Iron Tail as usual. WAIT A MINUTE! Does that guy wear a big jockstrap outside his pants? What the fuck? Is that some sort of fashion statement or something? I mean, usually your underwear, if you wear it outside your pants, well, you're either Superman or a complete idiot. And that guy most definitely isn't Superman because I'm totally thrashing him. And while I'm on the subject of those Hells Angels bums, I might as well remind you that in Fire Red and Leaf Green, they try to take over three islands. 
Why the hell Three Island? It's like if George W. Bush decide, decided to invade St. Kitts and Nevis. Do you know where St. Kitts and Nevis even is? Exactly! And here's that disgusting cod piece again. I am so not going to sleep tonight. But back to Dungeon 3, I was talking about Eevee and how useful it was. I forgot to mention, Helping Hand is quite a nifty move to have, especially considering, as I said, Eevee's move pool is kind of narrow. What it does, if you haven't tried it, is that it increases both the attack and special attack of any allies you have in the vicinity, which can be quite helpful if uh, you're being assaulted from behind and you can't do anything about it. Of course, there's always quick attack, but helping hand is a nice solution too. As for the next starter, it's been a common request ever since Mystery Dungeon 2 came out. I'm talking, of course, about Riolu. There were all sorts of rumors that Riolu was actually a starter in the game, even long after the game came out in America. But and the, any any message board of Mystery Dungeon 2 you checked would be full of topics like, you know, how do you get me Riolu as a starter? Is Riolu a starter? And it wasn't, so as you can imagine, some people were pretty pissed. Especially when you consider Skitty was a starter, while Eevee and Riolu were not. Seriously, why Skitty? No one likes it! Heck, it even has normalized, so not even for the purpose of having a powerful starter would you want to, to use it because it was the worst of the bunch! What are they thinking? But back to Riolu for a second, it has a surprisingly decent area of moves you can use even before you evolve it into Lucario. You've got um, Quick Attack of course, and as for fighting moves you've got Reversal and Force Palm. Reversal is especially interesting since both it and Flail, how they work in the main games is that if your HP is full, you do practically nothing, and you do a lot of damage if you're low on HP. In Mystery Dungeon 2, you do pretty decent damage even when you're full, and when you're close to dying, you can almost one-hit KO anything. The only problem, of course, is Reversal's shoddy accuracy, while c compared to it, Flail actually has 100 accuracy in Mystery Dungeon 2, while Reversal has, I think, 62 or something like that. Nonetheless, if you're dying and you connect with it, it's doom for anything but bosses, and even bosses won't like taking it. Of course, you'll need to have a few reviver seeds to take the boss's next attack, but whatever. As for the other three starters, they're really random choices in my opinion. Why them and not more popular Pokemon? I'll never get it, but they chose to make Fanpy Ball picks and shanks into starters. Why those three? Once again, it's worth repeating, I just don't get it. Shanks, well, there's absolutely no reason to use it. The only interesting moves it has is the electric standard fare, such as the Thunderbolt and the Shockwave TMs, and it also gets Discharge naturally, which forces it to round out its move set with filler like Bites for the Flinch Chance or a Thunder Wave, which is not a bad move, decent filler, but not much else. Compare that to Pikachu now, who gets agility, quick attack, and when it when it evolves into Raichu, it also gets Focus Blast. So why would you pick Shinx over Pikachu? And yeah, I'm aware that you get your starter depending on a personality test, but most what most people do is that they don't answer truthfully for the purpose of getting the starter that they want. Now I'm running out of time, but next time I am going to cover Fanpy and Vault Picks. So until then, see you in the next video!